fear, it's never finished. This is process. We will never finish it. We will never be good at it. It's every time new stage of our life. But we have to pass this stage because to be, to be ready for next stage. I'm not promising you guys that I will not have any more difficulties. I knew that I will. And in a way, I'm ready for it because that's new stage of my life. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We are in the studio today in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, with Brother Maxud. He is another of our one-name guests. Maxud is from Central Asia. We're going to talk about what life is like there. We're going to talk about his testimony. Brother Maxud, welcome to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Uh, so much thankful to be here and to share. Uh, it's my pleasure. Well, it is a blessing for us to have you here. Let's go back to the beginning of your story. You were born into a Muslim family. Yes. Uh, but you're a follower of Jesus now. Yes. How did that happen? That's a miracle because, you know, everyone in that part of the world that I live, uh, when they were born, they doing special namaz, on special prayer on their ears which claim them as uh, you are from childhood, belong to Islam, and you become Muslim. Uh, so it happened to me, and I was raised until until 17 years as a Muslim. I was raised in a family of educated people. My parents was a teacher, both of them, and uh, they're high educated. Especially my father have also Islamic knowledge, Islamic background. After Soviet Union pa- fell apart, so all these countries of Central Asian get independent. My country, one of them, and get independent. Praise the Lord for it. But independence brings for many countries good. For my countries, uh, wasn't that much good because civil war started. Democracy against the Islamic party, which would like to make the country as Islamic. Uh, civil war is bad. Uh, economy is bad. But in the same times, good news came. You know, good news came into my part of the world. And uh, I came to Christ in 1993 when uh, there was a campus crusade for Christ people. Oh, wow. That was amazing people. And that that moment, I think all over the world, there was a movement of Jesus films. You know, so they asked mm-hmm. my father, could school allow this uh, using the sport hall of the schools to put the Jesus films? You know, then my father was talking to all these high people, I mean, directors and all that kind of guys. So they allowed it because it was only good stuff all among this civil war, among this fight, among this killings, among this bloods, you know, something which have a meaning, something have a talk about love, something about talk about the different culture, God of love, you know. My father get that permission. Was the film in Russian? Was the film in the local language? In my what? local language. You know, okay. It was my lo- so th- you're th- seeing Jesus speak yes. your language. Yes. So this guy, he was a local Korean, but he was a believer in Jesus from another Soviet Union countries. He visited our house. And, you know, every Wednesday he comes. And I remember now that from childhood I wait for this Wednesday. Why? Because he's coming and he was all full of joy. He was closer than any relative. He was hugging us. And one of the best things I like about him, he never comes empty hand. <laughs> he always brings food. You know, and uh, we were hungry. We need food. And he cooked in our house with us together, become a friend and and making like our national foods, which is gorgeous food. Uh, it's called Palov, so Palov, Oshi Palov. Then he talks about Jesus. And at that moment, I didn't speak his language because his language was Russian language. And then he had these pictures, you know, these pictures of Bible stories. And then I said, Mom, I like the stories, but what this guy is talking about? I don't understand him. <laughs> My mother, she told me, you know, son, eat your food and you don't need to care what, what he talks about because he talks about Russian God. I said, OK. Then time passing, you know, like a year, almost two years passed in this kind of we have the relationship. And then I went to do sports and I find out before I went to Taekwondo, 
it was strange for me that they say that teaching is for free. So then before they do trainings, well, they, they gather all of us, and I find, like, a, he got the guitar, and he played some songs. Then later on, he said, let's pray. I said, pray? And then I just realized that he, after that prayers, he got the book, kind of, and he telling the story. Would it remind me that was same story that I hear from a childhood, like almost three years, I heard the story, and I just interrupt him, I say, can I tell you how this story will be ended about Lazarus? I know how this story ended. He will be rec- uh, he will be recover. You know he he will be raised again because Jesus will raise him. I will tell you the story how it ends. This uh, lady with Samarian lace. I know what it will be because I know three years that listening right. to the stories already. You know to see the pictures. That time I, I already a little bit could speak Russians, and they after a year uh, doing Taekwondo, they invite me to their center. I was thinking that that center of Taekwondo. But by the way, they took me to church. And what was shocked me, what was really affect me, the love that I feel there. And uh, I see like me, my age guys, about 100 peoples. And they all of them, they know my name. They come and call my name. Wow. And they hug me and they say, hey, welcome, welcome. I just, do you know me? And uh, uh, my coach, he told me that, these people pray for you over a year, for you to come here. And I could say that prayer of people is really affected on people's life. After one year, I could come, and I love to come there, not because of I was follower of Jesus, but I love to come there because, because of atmosphere, you know, atmosphere of love, atmosphere of receiving, atmosphere to be needed, you know, and especially on outside was atmosphere of blood and killing you know inside is a different atmosphere mm-hmm. start coming to church every sunday i was in sunday school because you're a muslim mm-hmm. did you feel guilty going to church did you feel like oh wait i'm a muslim i shouldn't be here or did it was there so much love that you're just like hey i don't care if i'm supposed to be here or not i these people love me and i want to be here this is a good good question because it takes for me from my 13 to my 18 years, like five years like it takes to me. Year. Wow. You know, I, I see myself that I'm more Christian, I'm more loving Jesus than I know or love Islam. I see is I don't need to earn stuff. It's, uh, it's not we are coming to God. It's God come to us. You know, it's not we have to pay. It's already paid by him. This is different worldview. Mm-hmm. I know God only from this side that He's a punisher. He is. Uh, he watching. He controls. He will. Uh, he will beat you if you do something. But here I see you, we are all sinner, and He could do for us everything. He did for us everything in the cross. One day, this message touched me. It's from Gospel of John. It said, "Whatever things you will ask in the name of Jesus, He He will provide." I I really. Feel it. I test it. I see God is God of healer. He hearing our prayers. I stood up immediately. I said, I want to be father of Jesus. And my younger brother, he said, I want to be. If my brother want to, I want to be too. <laughs> so today he's, he's a great servant. Also, by the way, I decided I will be follower of Jesus. I love him, and I decided I will give my life to him. But then I knew what now to expect. First problem. I knew that it will be started from my family. I went home and said to my mom, by that time I was 18 years old, I said, Mom, I become a follower of Jesus. I give my life to Christ. And uh, my younger brother, like me said, I give too my, with my brother. We are followers of Jesus. We are, we are Christians. And my father, my mother, just she, she started crying. She kind of said, I knew that that will be ended this way because it was too good for you not to be follower. And I'm so, uh, and now we will have a problem. Now community will be against us. Now a real life and suffer gonna start. But she scared me of my father. She says, tonight you guys will be punished. I remember all this five hours until waiting to my father. You know, I was thinking that he will get his belt. He will start to beat me. And that's what I expect from my, and it, it should happen. But we decided that whatever could happen, we will be followers of Jesus. Doesn't matter. And then evening become, and my mother cook, put in the table everything. 
while we eat everything, and then she start. Hey, uh, father, do you know what I heard today? And I knew that she started to take the conversation onto that direction, you know. And my father said, "What's happened? Do you know what your your son does?" And I'm kind of, "Okay, mom. Okay, mom." And then she said, "These two guys came to me and say that they are Christian. They're follower of Jesus." And there were kind of minute of silence. And my mother started barging about, they're become bad. They they decided to to be um, Christian people. Now what will be look like? Nobody will marry them. Nobody will uh, nobody will come to our house. Everybody will deny us. And all blah blah blah. My father in the end, he looked at my mom and said, "Be quiet. I'm tired to listen to you." And then he turned to us and said, "Guys, you decide to follow Jesus." I was scaring and say, "Yes." I am. I would like to be follower of Jesus. Look to him, my younger brother. You too? He said yes. And he said, come on to me. And I came to him, and he hugged me, and he said, thanks to God. And he said, two years ago, I gave my life to Christ. Wow. That was a moment. That was a big moment because my father, I, I see him change. I see him change a lot. I didn't know what's going with him, but he was full of love and joy. Last two, three years, he said, I gave my life two years ago, and I, 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 I didn't know how to tell you, but I was praying for you guys. Wow. And I will tell you, 99% of my people have known this story. They have opposite story. Mm -hmm. They were bitten. They were thrown away from a house. They had tons of problems. But in my case, not. But then my father says something that it was really touched me. He said, my dear son, I can't be minister of Jesus because his background, you know, he was a communist and then he became an Islamic and then he, he have story back there. But he said, that's my prayer for you and your brother and your brothers. Be a servant of Jesus. Serve to him. Love him, follow him. He is the way, truth, and life. And that moment, I feel really support. But I knew that it will cost for me outside. Right. Well, outside cost, I will feel all of them. But at least here, I have peace. Here, I was received. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Brother Maxud. He is from Central Asia. I think we've had a previous guest here, and we'll get to how we can pray. Yeah. But one of his prayer requests was, pray that whole families will come to faith because of exactly what you said. If the father and the mother are Christians, then the children won't face that first line of persecution, that first line of pressure, and you have to renounce this. Actually, I could approve it. I could approve it. I don't know who was that guy. I will say he was completely right. Because sometimes we are targeting somebody from the family. You know, we kind of steal him from the family. But if we're targeting, you know, as a leader of the house, and then whole family, you know, it's in Bible says, you and your whole family will be saved. In the mm -hmm. uh, book of uh, yeah. Acts. You and your it entire says, household. Entire your household. You, you, you will be saved in all your household. You know, th this is the truth. And I, I could give a testimony. I, I preached the gospel to one guy, and, I, and then this guy take me to his father. I preached the gospel to that guy. is one of the minority groups. I will tell you today, because he was leader of his minority groups, 50 followers of Jesus become. Today we have a church among them. Wow. Not only one, three churches. God is good there. Yes. So if you find somebody, you're really wanting to, to love Christ, but not love him only, pray with him, through him, to all the family. Yeah. So you mentioned this makes a huge difference. Your father is okay. In fact, your father basically commissioned you to ministry yes. that, that very yes. first day around yes. the dinner table. What about your mom? Did, did she come around? My mom become believers after 10 years. She received Jesus. And today... She's more stronger than even my father that day because she has daily relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm calling her to say, how are you, mom? Uh, love you. Sorry that I'm so far. I cannot visit you. 
She said this, don't worry about us. Jesus is with us. She was for sometimes alone at home. I was worried for her. She said, don't worry for me. Jesus is next to me. He loves me. He cares about me. Don't worry about me. So I could say today, I'm happy for my mom. And I could say uh, that today, as God have a purpose for us, that now we are running churches. We are running churches in our national language, in our countries. And uh, I am the pastoring one church. The brother that I talk, he's pastoring another church. And my younger brothers, he have a gift of servant. He's a good, great servant of Jesus. He, he's kind. He's so bold. One of the stories that I will tell you about my another younger brother, when I were in the school, we had never probably we were we were best guy, you know, because we would know Jesus. But my younger brother, when I finished the school, he came every day fighting, every day's blood, every day's his clothes was dirty, every day. And I'm one day I'm tired of him. I said, I study in the same school. I never fight. Why you are fighting all the time? I'm tired of you. You are shaming my parents. That was a moment that he said something that still touched me. He said, brother, I'm not fighter. I'm beaten every day for the name of Jesus. Wow. I said, what are you talking about? Why, why you are beaten? He said, while they were in the school, they were quiet because we were three of us. And we were strong. We could look after each other. Yeah. And you're gone. You are not in the school anymore. And you know, every day after school, I am beaten because I'm a follower of Jesus. I hug him and I say, I'm sorry to think about you wrong way. So today when he talks, everyone who have a conflict in the school, now he's a great friend. You know... <laughs> When people come with difficulties to me, talking to me about what they're facing, I just go with them through it. I cry with them. I pray. That is the answer. Be with them. And to say that when we get to follow Jesus, we knew from from beginning, Jesus said, get the cross and follow me. Get the cross and follow me. And I knew it. To follow him is not easy decision. It's not fun. It takes life. One of the other things what I do is equip them with the scripture. Mm -hmm. 365 times in the Bible it says that don't be afraid. He said the same things to Abraham. He says this to Joshua. He said the same things to Jonah. He says the same things to John. He said something to Peter, Bible, all about this. There's no book that does not talk about this. Psalms all about this. You know, and I encourage them with that passages of Bible because my word is nothing but the word of God. This is the authority. Mm -hmm. This is where it comes from. But one thing that it's very important for me how I personally overcome fears because I had fears of preaching the Gospels. Because if you're not overcome fears, you never preach the Gospels. You always hide yourself. You always deny you are a Christian. You are always denied that you are a follower of Jesus. You were always being uncomfortable with being a follower of Jesus. But you know one thing's happened in my life. I struggle with it. I pray about it. God, what can I do? And Jesus shows me in, God, in the book of Peter, it says this, to suffer for Jesus, that's honor. But to suffer for your own mistake, that's the shame that we could bring to the name of Jesus. If you are if we are suffering for our bad stuff that we do, we worth it. But if we suffer for following Jesus, that's an honor. By the way, I read, <laughs> I read one verse uh, in your office that says that we have cloud of witnesses. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I think book of Hebrews, mm -hmm. you know, thirteen. We have a cloud of witnesses, and they are all passing this. We are passing this. So when I get to know this truth. When the Holy Spirit touched me on that, shame, fear, it disappeared. I'm proud of Jesus. And <laughs> there's a, many of my neighborhoods, the guys are not believers. They say, we love you and we hate you. Why we love you? Because you're a real man. You are the man. I say, so why you don't like me? 
you are Christians. But I, I tell them this, let's look back. I am the man because of Jesus. Without him, I'm a horrible person. You don't want to even sit with me or drink tea, cup of tea with me. Because of Jesus, I am who I am today. When I overcome my personal fear, I am teaching this to others. Mm -hmm. Hey, brothers, don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. Fear, it's never finished. This is process. We will never finish it. We will never be good at it. It's every time's new stage of our life. But we have to pass this stage because to be, to be ready for next stage. I'm not promising you guys that I will not have any more difficulties. I knew that I will. And in a way, I'm ready for it. Why? Because that's new stage of my life. New time for me. And the trust is there because you have seen God work through the difficulties you've already been through. You've seen God bring you this far. So you have confidence that whatever's down the road, he can bring you through that as well. God says to Job, you can touch him everything, but don't touch his life. So this is the same God that I have. Mm -hmm. He will protect me. He will protect me. He will guide me. He will let me. Am I, am I did mistake or am I will make mistakes? Yes, I'm human. Will I be stupid in a way? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> but I know that I have a Lord who will forgive me, who will teach me and guide me. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Brother Maxud. He is from Central Asia. Brother Maxud, as we finish up, we always like to equip listeners to pray. We talked earlier about praying for whole families to come to faith together yes. so that there's not persecution within the family. Yes. What are some other ways that we can pray for our family members, our brothers and sisters in Central Asia? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Because hope of my country is Jesus. Hope of economy is Jesus. Hope of political is Jesus. Hope of family life that will be good family institution is Jesus. Hope of marriage is Jesus. Hope of future of kids is Jesus. Answer for all questions is Jesus. Please pray for it. You know, we, we, we see in the book of Acts that Peter was praying and God showed him that you have to go to this house. And Cornelius was prayed and God showed to Cornelius that one will come and tell you truth about me. Many, many, million peoples, they're searching for God. Let's pray that they really find Jesus. And by the way, I would like to give testimony. Many saw Jesus. Many saw in their dream Jesus. And he was so loving. He was so kind to them. And they knew that it was Jesus. So my prayer is my people, let them to find Jesus. Amen. That's my request of prayer. And other things, please pray for peace. We are living in such a neighborhood, which is, whew, it's not easy, but please pray for us. I love my country. I love my leader of country. I believe that God put him in this position because God says all countries from me, all kings from me. I, I love him so much, which is his honest answer. Because with, with this guy, now I have, we have so much, in a way, freedom also. Praise the Lord. If it could be Islamic, what we could do? Nothings. But God is good. We are a democracy country. And praise the Lord for it. Amen. That's my honest answer. Amen. Thank you very much. Brother Maxud, thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Thank you for helping us uh, pray for our brothers and sisters in Central Asia and for your passion that just comes through, your passion to reach the people there. Thanks for being our guest this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Glad to be here. It is our honor to have you. And thank you for listening this week to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. If you're just joining us, know, as always, you can listen to this whole conversation at our website, vomradio.net. You can also find the Voice of the Martyrs Radio wherever you listen to podcasts, and I would encourage you to do that and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And be back with us next week as we continue to talk about what God is doing around the world right here 
on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.